In this JavaScript coding exercise, we're going to walk through how we can get the average from an array, and we're going to see how we can leverage some functional programming mechanisms in order to do that. So if you have an array, something like this, what I want to be able to do is to take any number of values, add them up, and then divide them. So if you're a little bit rusty on your sixth grade mathematics, then the way that you get an average is by totaling up each one of the values. So we're going to grab the sum of the array, and then we need to divide that sum by the total number of elements. So in this case, it would be three. And so the average of this specific array is two. And we're going to see how we can perform this process and do it in as efficient a way as possible. So if you are following along and you want to actually learn this and really work through it, what I highly recommend is that you pause the video right now and you go and you try to build this out yourself and then afterwards come back and then watch the solution that I personally built out. So now in my solution, this is the way that I would personally do that. Now there are a number of ways to get the average from a array, and I don't want you to use any third-party tools or any kind of mathematics library in order to do this, because I want you to understand how to work with a collection and then how to perform computations on it, because this is gonna be something you're gonna need to do in coding interview exercises and also just in your day-to-day -day development. So if you were to ask me how to get the average from an array in JavaScript, what I would do is create a function called get average, and I'm gonna use a arrow function for this, and it's simply gonna take in a single variable argument. So I'm going to say I want to accept an array as an argument, and then I'm going to use an arrow function. Now inside of here, this is where all the magic is going to happen. This is where I'm going to create a sum that's going to tally up all the values inside of the array that got passed in, and then I'm going to divide it by the length. Now, there are a number of ways you could do this. You may have done something, if you tried to do this yourself, you may have done something like this, where you created a variable where you kind of tried to keep track. So you may some, do something like const i and, or total or you know something like that, started it off at zero and then said array for each and you created some kind of for loop, and then from there you tried to tally up each one of the values. So you said total, and then you incremented that total by each element, and that would have been a perfectly fine way of doing it. And if you got the answer where you're able to, you know, create your sum and then create your uh, create your average, then that's perfectly fine. And I would not say that that's a wrong way of doing it whatsoever. But what I want to do is show you a different way of doing it. I want to show you a functional way. So I'm going to use a tool called reduce. And so this is a function specific to JavaScript. And before we even get into that, what I want to also walk you through, because when it comes to these solutions, it's really, to me, the goal is not just to give you the answer. That'd be pointless. I could, If that was really the case, I would give you the different instructions, and then I'd just send you the solution and just post that, and that would be all there was to it. To me, there's no point in that. I want to impart to you the way that I personally would walk through the solution and how I would see other professional developers do it. And so if I were to give myself or some other developer that's experienced a, this exact problem, what I usually would see them do and what I do personally is walk through their solution without actually getting into the code. So I would do something like this. If I was set, if I was told to get the average inside of it, I would write some pseudocode. So I'd say, okay, the first thing I need to do is I need to sum the values from the array. So right there, I know the first step. Then from there, I need to get the length of the array 
And then I need to divide the length or the array, I should say, the array sum by the length. That is right there with those three lines. That is the pseudocode for this program. So this entire program needs to first sum the values, then get the length, and then divide the array by that length. Now, something that I have seen, and this is a very big distinction between experienced developers and new developers, not to say that there's anything the matter with getting into this, because I remember when I first started developing, I struggled through a number of different problems. And what I saw was when I was younger and I started to try to build out solutions like this, I would just stare at the screen for a little while. And that really did not accomplish anything. And one thing I noticed when I started paying attention to the experienced developers I was learning from was that they very rarely simply stared at the screen, but instead they would do things like this. They would write out the process, even if they weren't writing code, they would say, okay, I wanna do this first. Then I want to do this, and then I want to perform this other task. And what that does is it gives them a mental framework for being able to build out the solution. So let's first take this first process, and I'm going to even separate these out just so we can really have a really nice distinction on how to build this out. So the way I'm going to sum these up is I'm going to use the reducer process. So I'm going to say const reducer and set this equal to a function. So I'm going to say total and then current value and I'm going to use an arrow function for this where I just say total plus current value. And just in case you're wondering right here, this is just some boilerplate code and these names are not special. I wanna be very clear whenever I'm working with special reserve names and when I'm not. So if I wanted to, I could say that this was X and this was Y, this was Z, and this was Y, and this is Z. None of the names that we just used are reserved or anything like that. They're simply descriptive names. And so what we have done here is we've created a function called reducer. Reducer takes in two arguments, a total, a current value, and then it runs this process where it tallies the total plus the current value. Now what we're going to do with this reducer, now that we've created it and we've stored it in a variable, we're going to create a, another variable here called sum and set this equal to r, which r right here is just whatever array we pass in to get average. So I'm gonna say r dot reduce. Now reduce is a reserved word. So reduce is a function that is available to the array class inside of JavaScript. So any array you can call reduce on. And what reduce does is its argument is a function. So you need to pass reduce a function. And so let's actually look, if you're following along with VS Code, you may see this as well, where it says a function that accepts up to four arguments. The reduce method calls the callback function one time for each element in the array. So it calls the specified callback function for all the elements in an array, and the return value of the callback function is the accumulated result. Now, if you are not familiar with Reduce or JavaScript, or if you're not in the practice of reading documentation, that may all have sounded like a weird alien language. So let's walk through an example of exactly how this works. So all you have to do for Reduce is you pass it in a function. So remember, we just created this nice reducer function. So let's see, oh, and I'm not going to save this. If, you're, if you follow me on a lot of tutorials, you may notice I do this a lot, and it's because I'm in the habit whenever I'm working on my own applications to save the file constantly. Uh, but right now, I'm not trying to save the file because I simply want to show you the output. So if I create some kind of an array, so if I, let's say that 
I create a git, so I'm gonna call git average, and inside of it, we'll use our example of just one, two, and three. Oh, and actually, let me call it like this. And it says undefined. So, oh, it's because I need to return this. That'd be helpful. So there we go. Okay, so now we get six. How in the world did we get six? Well, let's walk through it. We created a reducer function here. That reducer took in a total and a current value. Now, the thing that's kind of weird about this, if you've never seen this before, is you may have noticed we're not passing in a total or a current value. That's what the reduce function does. So when you pass in a function to reduce, it expects this kind of setup where you're passing in the first argument is what is called the accumulator. So what it does is it accumulates the value. The second argument here is going to be whatever the current value is of the array that you're working with. Now, if you're still confused, let's actually get rid of this. So I'm going to say, you know, I'm not going to pass in this weird reducer thing that I just created. I'm going to grab all of these values and let's just paste this in directly. So I'm going to paste in a total and a current value. So I'm passing in these arguments and then I'm performing the exact same task. So I can even get rid of this here. And you can see down here that we're still getting the same value. So what reduce does is it's taking in that total. It's using that as the accumulator, which means that it accumulates with each time that we go through. It's going to take the current value and then it's going to add it to the total. Now, if you still don't believe me, let me add on to this list. So I'm going to say three, four, and five. Now, notice here that we're adding it up. So now we're at 15. So it is taking each one of those values. So if you add each one of these up, this does equal 15. Now, reduce is not limited to doing sums. If that was the case, that wouldn't be very helpful because then we could just call a sum method and it would take everything in. But it has to be more flexible than that. Imagine that we switch out this plus sign with a multiplication symbol. Now you can see on line 10, it switched. The value is now 120. So this accumulator here, this total, is taking the current value and then it is now multiplying it. If I switch it back to the plus, you can see that it's back at 15. Let's walk through exactly what's happening here. When we start, we're starting with a total, and let me make this a comment just so it doesn't give us an error. So the total when we start off is zero. And then from there, we're going to take that current value. And in this case, when we're passing this in, the current value is one, just like we see it right there. So that's the first time. Now we add one plus zero. Well, we know one plus zero equals one. So that's now the current value of total. So the next time we go through, so what reduce does is it iterates through the entire collection. So now it keeps track of that total. So now the total is gonna be one and that current value, because we're now iterating through, now we're at two. So the current value is now two, which means that the return value is going to be two plus one. So it's going to be three. And then the next time it's going to be total, which means our new total is going to be three because that's what the return value was. It's accumulating. And then the current value is now going to be three. And as you may have guessed, it's going to tally up three plus three b6, and then it's going to continue on from there. So it iterates each time. So it's going to be just like you created some kind of for loop or something like that. It's going to keep track of that value. It's going to loop through and it's going to keep on adding on. And it's going to be adding on in our case, but it also could be multiplying. It could be dividing. It could be doing anything you want. You can have this function be very flexible with whatever process it is, and it will just keep track of that value. Now, I'm going to create our reducer function again because I think it's a little bit easier to keep track of it. So I'm going to say reducer equals, and then just we're, I'm just going to take these values again. 
and then paste it up here. And now I can just pass in reducer. This is one of the reasons I love JavaScript because we can pass in our, we can store ver entire functions and variables and then pass them in just like we're doing right here. So there's no difference between the code we used to have and what I have here. This is just a little bit easier to read and keep track of and also make changes to. So now that we have that, we know this is working. So right now, it's almost kind of like we have a sum function. This is going through and it's returning the sum. So if you notice, we have everything we needed for step one. Now we need to get the length of the array. Well, how do we get the length? Well, we could, let me get rid of the sum. And if we wanted to, we could just say return r dot length. And this is gonna return five because there are five elements in the array. So that is what we're wanting. We now know how to get the length of the array. Now we don't wanna return this, so I'm gonna move this down and so move it into the next step. So I wanna divide the array sum by the length. So I can do that by just saying sum, which is our variable, divide it by the array length. And as you can see right here, we have our entire working program. So we now have the ability to come here and get the values that we want. We have one an array of one, two, and three. That returns the average of two, which is the correct average. Now, if we were to add any other value, so just a bunch of random numbers here, you can see that the average keeps on updating and that is perfect. So if you take the values, if you take a list of 1, 2, 3, 23, 4, 5, 21, 34, and 5, it returns the average of 272.125. So our function of get average is working perfectly and we're leveraging a number of different programming components here. We've built an arrow function, then we're calling it. We have created a reducer and we're using the reduce function. So we're passing our reducer into reduce. So we're accumulating the value. That's how we're creating the sum. And then from there, we're just taking our sum and we're dividing it by the length. So I hope that if you went through this, that this solution makes sense and it helps to give you a little bit of clarification on what functions like reduce and some of the functional components of JavaScript do to help you understand how you can apply it to your own programs.